Today we are struggling with all of those promises that got made in our documents that govern us as a people. The discussion today talked about those democratic rights and the principles of our country. The bottom line is civil rights and labor rights may have two movements, but it's always one goal, for the strengthening of character of people so that they realize the dignities that the country promises. I have the privilege of, for the last 15 years, working for 1199 SCIU, which is a union whose history and whose roots have always been one that the struggle of workers to have economic justice in their lives is deeply grounded in making sure that those same workers have justice in their lives when they go back to their communities. What makes a difference is knowing where you've been and the shoes that you walked in and seeing you having your perspective that I don't have. And we need to bring that not only into our rank and file, but into our leadership. My generation doesn't want to organize the way the generation above us did. It's this kind of top-down, um, hierarchical, rank and file organizing is, is incredibly effective and has done wonders for the people of this country, but it's not how people of my generation operate. Millennials have a much more natural understanding of horizontalism and decentralized communications, and I think that that's going to be really imperative to how we organize going forward. And I also think that there's just this freshness and this creativity that we can bring to the movement, and hopefully some humility. We need to find ways to work together. We need to listen to the voices that often get shut down, so that in 2018, when we do have these big elections coming up, we're ready. We brought together 35 millennials from across the organizing spectrum to come together in Washington, D.C. in anticipation of um, Trump's uh, government to start talking about the next steps that we need to take as a multiracial movement led by millennials to tackle the issue of not just resisting Trump, but also how do we strengthen democracy, how do we reclaim our democracy, how do we get young people to stay involved in the political process. Less than 24 hours after, you know, after the polls had closed, we had like 200 people on a phone call and we have a listserv now of thousands of people, many of whom have never been activists before. If you want people to stay involved, they have to win. And it can be small things. It can be the establishment of a group. You know, it can be, you know, a service that you're providing for the community. I am worried about trendy activism. I'm worried about, like, oh, like it's going to die down and people are going to normalize Trump. We're in such an interesting moment of, of crisis and opportunity because old systems are breaking down. There's an opportunity to do something new because whether it's Democracy Spring or Black Lives Matter or the Dreamers, we understand that the work of direct action, of actually confronting and trying to interrupt business as usual, is required to change people's hearts and minds, to open up sense of possibility and imagination, and to make something that yesterday seemed impossible, tomorrow seem inevitable. <laughs>